Hi, it's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead, and I wanted to talk about a couple of projects that I have done lately. So the first one is going to be for some Christmas gifts, and I got the idea from, hi Ruby, from watching Cedar Creek Homestead's YouTube, and uh, I really enjoy listening to Josie. And she showed how to make spun or creamed honey. I always heard it called creamed honey. And I, I really loved that when I was a kid. It always spread easy, didn't tear up your bread when you had toast. Okay, Ruby. And um, it was just a, it was a nice thing. Very light color. And I kind of assumed as I got older that they added you know, special ingredients, or they whipped it, or they did something to give it that consistency mm. that is so different from regular honey. Mm. But it is 100% honey. You have to have a seed honey of creamed honey. Mm. So, as you know, I have my own bees, even though I'm not the best at checking the hive yet. Mm. And... Mm. So I used about three, let's see, yeah, three quarts of my own, Ruby, stop, three quarts of my own honey, and to that I added 16 ounces of store-bought cream honey. And then you just stir that in together to get it completely or as near complete as possible blended through. When I was done, I thought it did not look like it was light enough in color, like maybe I was a little short. So I went to town and I had to go to two different stores because the first place had a very tiny container. It was 12 ounces of the spun honey. And then so I went to another one that had a 16 ounce container. So I stirred those in to it, and that looked about the right color. And I poured it all into a gallon jar. Some people go ahead and pour theirs directly into the jars that they are going to gift. I, di I didn't do that. I just didn't have that stuff prepared yet, but it, that will work fine. So then you just let it wait. Can you hear my dog? She's so crazy. Um, and it needs to be at a low room temperature. Not much above 60 and certainly not below 40. So I've got it sitting on the floor in, in my dining room, which I think will give a perfect temperature. The next project I decided to do today. So when I finished yesterday, this spun honey, and I just have to wait, I think maybe about two weeks. We'll see, it might be three. And oh, I should say first what that it does. It changes the manic, the structure at a manic, can't even say the word, molecule type level. So honey, if you uh, have liquid honey, if you get it, it gets too cold or it's sat for really, you've had a long time, it will crystallize. Still perfectly good, um, but it will form these large sugar crystals. And so the simple way to get rid of that is you just put your jar in either a warm location or a warm a pan with warm water, because I'm, I do raw honey, I certainly don't want hot water, because uh, I don't want to kill the goodness in it. And then it will reliquify. But spun honey, for some reason, I don't, I don't understand it, it changes it. And it makes the crystals, instead of getting large, they are very small. 
smaller than they would be and that's what gives it that nice consistency. So I'm excited to see how well this works in the next two or three weeks and uh, to be able to give that, some of that away. Then today I had two things I wanted to do. The first one I'm going to talk about a little bit was cleaning the chicken house. You've seen a video of me doing that. It's not that exciting. It's not usually that horrible either, but I decided to use the deep litter method. And that is when the chickens soil the bottom of their, uh, underneath their roosts and stuff, you just throw sawdust or shavings over that. And then when that gets soiled, you just keep layering it. The idea is it keeps more warmth in the house and it, it's supposed to be great. Anyhow, for me, not great. It, and maybe it would be okay in the summer when it's drier, but my chickens go out in the rain and my ducks certainly get very wet. And then they come back in. And if you know anything about chicken houses, when it gets wet in there, the smell, the ammonia is much stronger. It's pretty overwhelming. And so that's what happened. So I had let it go for a long time. And in some areas, it was probably 10 inches deep. Um, and I just thought this is not working. So today I was going to do that. And then I was going to come in and work on at my desk. My desk did not happen today. <laughs> um, I went out at 11 and began working in there. And that was so heavy and compacted that I did not get done till 3.30 in the afternoon. I worked straight through. Um, so when I would get a wheelbarrow, and I think I did about 12 wheelbarrow loads, um, maybe it was 10, but I think about 12. Then I would take it directly into the garden, which I'm is at rest now. You have saw that if you've seen my other videos that I've pulled out pretty well everything and have top dressed it with a very thick layer of leaves that we raked up. And so on top of that, I began spreading this fresh chicken manure. I got, I think, 16 beds done today, which is fabulous. Um, so the beds that had anything that was something we would still be eating this winter, uh, in the next two or three months, I did not put that raw manure around because I didn't want to contaminate it. Uh, that would be like, I have a couple small cabbages, I have some celery. There's something else. Anyhow, those two things. Oh, and the lettuce, that's it. And so I didn't want those to get contaminated. So I got that all spread out. And um, then I did the, the empty beds. And the only bit, and the blueberries went around them. The raspberries threw that all in. And then Patina offered to help me and I said what I'd really like her to do is to remove the cattle panels for me and the cattle panels is what everything grows up and supports things so she took them off my asparagus bed so now I'm going to be able to trim back all the old dead fronds and um, I'll just we're it's able to pull up the last of the tomato plants those will all be going in the compost, and I'm super happy about that. But by the time I got in, I was pretty tuckered. So about four and a half hours is my limit for um, 
pretty vigorous physical work. So I came in and sat down and was very glad I got that done, but definitely not getting to my desk. And of course, you know, I came in and had to shower. So anyhow, so that was a good project too. So the creamed honey, cleaning out the chicken house. I'm super glad those things are done. And <clears throat> we all are glad when we have a project and we're able to bring that to completion. So it's something to be thankful for that God's given us the strength for that. And I appreciate that so much. He's good to me. So I'm going to close for now. I want to pray for blessings on you and yours in your house, out of your house, in the day and in the night. And whatever you do, keep dreaming.